I just want to change the brush itself to the clone clone brush. So at the top bar here, you see this little icon. That's your paintbrush icon. If I select this, go into search. I'll just start typing clone, and there we go. Jumps right down at us. And you can see the way this works now. There's uh, two circles here. They follow each other. Um, circle with the X is what you're sampling. So for an example here, um, I'm going to actually make another layer for this, I think. I'll make a clean layer. And I wonder, will this paint through? I wonder. Um, no, okay, so it won't work. I thought, I thought if I'd done this on a separate layer and then merged them down, won't work because it's sampling from a blank layer so you're not getting any effect so i'll just remove that and i'll paint directly on this one when i press the control button you can see it's starting to sample the background you can ignore that red square it's only because of my color selection and um, if i select i'm going to look at this right so this is the main problem i want to find a tile that's similar to this that doesn't have that crease that i can just kind of paint that away so if i zoom out my image here this one here looks pretty accurate to it. So I'll increase the size of my brush um, up here. I'll just grab this. I'm going to press select, or sorry, control. And I'll click and I'm sampling that section. So you can see that's where the, the circle ended there. And I'm just going to come back to this. And I'll just click and I'm going to paint and run over this. So it's basically sampling that color directly onto that layer that worked out pretty well i might want to lower the size of my brush here as well and just kind of get in do a little finer painting here just to completely erase that and you can see there's kind of a cut off here so um if i got a pale tile like this not really Okay, um, I'll let my ambient occlusion map take care of that. I'll show you how to set that up. I'm going to do the same here. This is a very obvious one. I'm not too worried about that gum splatter, or whatever that is there. I'm just going to completely paint over this. So I want to try to match this color here. So have I got one that matches? Again, not really. Um... I think it probably this fella. I'll just I'll I'll try this and see. Okay, I'm going to again sample this, and I'll come up and I'll just click and drag. Okay, so it's getting a bit obvious here that that was a paint job. So I want to knock down the size, and this seems pretty accurate to that. So I'll sample from this guy, and I'll just kind of paint in sections here, just to break that up so that it's not as uniform. Okay, I've sampled the top here, I don't want that. So I'll select the center, and I'm going to completely cover this gun. And I'll scale up in this, and just kind of try to blend these a little better together. Okay, now I've got to match this, so I think maybe this section here might work. Uh, let's paint across like that. There's a little gap here. I will just copy from here, I guess. And uh, paint over the grease. There as well. Okay. And now, again, see, these are kind of, they look like problems here, where you can see um, this here and this here. Like, there's no gaps fade in that. And it's not too big a deal, but it could, in areas of uh, repetition on the model, that could kind of stand out to us. So I'm going to use the ambient occlusion map for this. I think, does this thing still have a squiggle on it? It does. Dang. No biggie, I'll just uh, clone him out again. Because there's no color data in these maps it's actually pretty easy to, to do this i'll just grab maybe this section here and completely erase him see that's what happens when you're not fully focused i guess now these areas 
Like that's quite the offset. It's pretty apparent that that's a problem. Uh, same here. I can manually try to paint that out, I guess. And it's going to cover that. Um, here too. So it'll be a little harder to do this with a mouse, I guess. But I'm just going to do a paint layer for this. And I will grab my, my pen, whoever the hell it is. Right, I'm just going to select a regular brush for this one, so I'll select this guy. And I just want to turn my size modifier on. So when I, it's sensitive to the pressure. Now I'll just, on this paint layer, I'll grab a, a black color. And I'm just going to, just going to fill this in myself. It's a little too black at the moment, but uh, I can lower the opacity of the layer. I'm going to kind of correct that course there. It's just so it's not so obvious here, maybe as well. And to the opposite side, I guess. And anywhere else. Maybe I'll do one here. No, I think that's okay there. Up top. Okay, so it's uh, the black ink that I just painted there. Is it probably a little bit too dark? Like you can see here, it's quite obvious. So I'm just going to lower down the opacity of this layer a little. Maybe something like that. And I want to merge this down now. So with that layer active, I'll press control and click the layer below. Right click and I'll say merge with layer below. And now I can take this layer and I'll move it to the top of the, the list. So I have my paint layer here. Don't need that. I'll move this guy up so that it's above the color map. I turn the color map on. And with that now, if I change the blend layer of this, the blend layers are here, just under layers. Click this and go to multiply. It will overwrite basically. The way that works is it removes the, the lighter channels. So your your white and it just keeps you with the dark, the black channels. And this can then be blended in. So say you want a lot of dirt in between those tiles, you can just up the opacity to get this as dark as you want. And now because of those lines I painted in, you can see that we have uh, we got that definition back where the the clone tool was kind of erasing that stuff on us that we didn't want erased. So I'll keep that layer above my color layer and I'll just keep cloning these um, these problems out. Actually, here's another. I could probably fix this up as well. Again, I've just been subtle with the pen here. You can do this with a mouse, I wouldn't recommend it though. It, 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 you won't get as clean a result. Okay, so I'll grab my clone again. Alright, so I'll go to my color layer and I'll continue. I see a problem here, so I'm going to try to blend this layer in, I think. Select that. And just run down along this seam. Now it's a little drastic in comparison here, so I'll probably blend that back a little. That's worse, okay. Um, maybe I need to go a little more sporadic with it. Not that sporadic. Maybe something like that. That's not too bad. Okay, so we just look for some more areas. Here's a pretty obvious one. Uh, maybe take from this tile, possibly. So again, I'm looking. I'm looking at the uh, the tile where the cursor has the X on it. That's my sample point. And I'll just pull him out like that. Now I've kind of burnt him in a little bit, so I'll sample this and put him back. A touch. Now again, that's pretty obvious there. So I'll probably take some of the dankier stuff here. 
hands could have been. And again, with this kind of stuff, subtlety is very, uh, very important. You don't want a, an obvious correction on the tile. Okay, so here is kind of a two-tone color, so I'll try to blend that and remove that one in the center. That's better. Okay, so the obvious points that we're going to see seams on is the join. So if I turn, if I turn my uh, my guides back on, only along those two lines is where we're going to be getting these problems. So if you can look at your image and you can see along those lines that there's nothing immediately popping out at you, you're probably good to go from that. So I'll turn them off again, and that to me looks pretty okay. So now I'll just test my tiling again. And you can see that's pretty well hidden there now, and we got a nice tile size as well. So, I'm just going to quickly save this. And I will look now at the normal map. That, I don't think, needs anything. I'm just going to turn off actually the ambient occlusion here. That looks fine. I don't need to do any fix ups there. Maybe here actually. Uh, a little bit here too. So again, no color that I involved in this. I can pop up pretty much anywhere. And just make sure you're on the right layer. Pop up this and I will just color that over. And um, be this guy for here. Other than that, I don't see anything that would be an issue. That's probably safe to go there. And now I'll just look at the roughness. This can be kind of important here. So we can see here's a very clear scene. But again, it's all regular color data, or no color data, I should say. Um, copy here. And paint, no. God damn, come on. There we go. So I'm just blending that crease out. That carries on along. I'll probably use a darker mix here. Very slight little um, seam here. I've probably been a little over the top about this, but it's it's good practice regardless. Just to fix these little problems on its on, on the go. Vertically, it's not too bad. It's kind of obvious here. Just do away with that. Here. Yeah, I suppose we fixed that up. Okay. So that roughness is looking fine now. So that's all our maps basically uh, corrected and made tileless again, or uh, tiling. Um, I want to com com combine both this AO map, ambient occlusion, and the color map, I think. So I'll select the ambient occlusion map on top. I'll shift select the tile, color tile, and merge with layer below. So now the ambient, ambient occlusion map disappeared and it's integrated here into our, our color map. So we're just going to basically export these out and replace the downloads that we've done, the 1K downloads. And then we're ready to actually make our file and start getting our texture atlas going that way. Export these and let's go to file, save as, and I already have a instance of it saved here. I'll just copy that, tile roof albedo, and I'll override it. Um, you might get this warning as well. Just um, It's letting you know that the file you're saving it as is not going to be editable as far as layers go after this. 
It's asking if you want to save a Kryza document image file as well. I won't bother for this, maybe for the texture atlas I will, but for the moment this is disposable. I'll just overwrite that. Now I'll hide that layer and I'll turn on my normal map and go to file, save as, and I'll select this guy and just change albedo to normal. Save that. And then the roughness. Save as and Okay, so that's our roofing taken care of. We want to maybe now look through our other available textures and find some brick wall textures, maybe some wood textures too. And basically from the next video on, what I'll be doing is putting them in the Atlas and exporting the actual texture, Atlas textures to use in Blender then. And we start putting them onto our models and seeing how they look in, in the scene properly. But uh, yeah, we'll move on to that next.